Hello there, I'm Stu and welcome along to episode 2 of the London Vlogger podcast where I take a walk and explore London's hidden gems, landmarks, riversides, woodlands, parks, sites and history. If you've not already listened, episode 1 is now live and you can access that in the same place you're listening to this. In this episode, I'm going to kick off my first walk on the podcast by taking you on a wonderful stroll from Tower Bridge all the way to Stave Hill via the Rotherhive River View, Southwark Park, Canada Water, Greenland Dock and Russia Dock Woodland. Also, I'll be ending the show with the first of my fascinating facts and fun features, where each week I'll be giving you a bit of trivia in the form of a fact or a question to get you thinking. To follow the Tower Bridge to Stave Hill walk, you can find it at www.londonvlogger.com, where you can also find all my other walks. But first, let's begin the walk by starting at Tower Bridge, which isn't just recognisable to Londoners, but people from across the world. Tower Bridge opened on the 30th of June 1894 and was designed by Horace Jones, the city's architect, in collaboration with John Wolfe Barry, and took eight years to construct using five contractors and 432 workers a day. Originally painted brown, it was repainted in 1977, red, white and blue, to celebrate the Queen's Silver Jubilee, adding to the patriotic nature of the landmark. In order to construct it, a staggering 11,000 tonnes of steel were used to create the framework of the tower and its walkways. Since 1976, The closing of the bridge has been operated with hydraulic power driven by oil and electricity, rather than steam which was previously used. If you ever want to pass under the bridge, it is free to do so, and you can do it 365 days per year. Though remember to give 24 hours notice. Every year the bridge is raised, on average, 850 times, so when you're walking by it, you may well see it being lifted. I do love the structure of Tower Bridge. It is so distinctive and really illustrates the old, traditional historical significance of London, which only a few landmarks can bring. Also, it has a real royal feel to it and has to be one of the most beautiful bridges in the capital. A short walk from Tower Bridge takes me to the Rotherhive Riverside, where you get a ground-eye view of many of the capital's well-known landmarks. When you look across the river, you can spot the Shard, Tower Bridge, the Walkie Talkie, the Cheese Crater, the Gherkin, and even St Paul's Cathedral. And if you were to take a picture of them, it's like they're all trying to squeeze into the photo. Walking along the river takes me to Southwark Park, which opened to the public in 1869, Designed by Alexandra Mackenzie, the park is 61 acres in size and includes a lake, a bandstand which dates back to 1884, a bowling green, play area, gallery, caff and football pitches. Right beside the bandstand sits a drinking fountain which is commemorated to Mr Jabaz West who was a member of the local temperance society. This was London's first public memorial to honour a working class man. A walk through the park takes you to the tranquil lakes and plants and at the forefront of that is the beautiful Ida Salter Rose Garden which was built by West Bermondsey MP Alfred Salter in 1936 as a dedication to his wife Ida Salter who was a social reformer and president of the Women's Labour League. In 2001, 2.5 million from the Heritage Lottery Funds was used for major refurbishments to the park. These included the restoration of the bandstand, a new bowling pavilion, a children's play area, as well as work being undertaken on the lakes, with the main gates being installed. One of the main aspects of Southwark Park is that it combines nature with leisure and recreation, as on the one hand you have a picturesque lake with the football pitches right next to it, something you don't quite see in parks such as St James's Park or Green Park. With the flat surrounding the outer side of the park, It does give you a sense that it's a real community park where locals will come to play sport, walk the dog or run or just sit and relax in its tranquil setting. Leaving Southwark Park through its grand old gates, I take a short walk past Surrey Quays Overground Station and Surrey Quays Shopping Centre to my next destination, Canada Water. 
As the name suggests, Canada Water's origin comes from that of the country Canada. Constructed in 1876 on the site of two former timber ponds, the name derives from the Anglo-Canadian trade which took place in the docks. In 1926, two neighbouring timber ponds were replaced by the Quebec dock, which were connected to the Canada dock. In 1964, the Canada estate was built on the former site of the chemical works and consisted of five courts of four-storey blocks. It wasn't until the early 1980s when the docks finally shut down with the closure of the Surrey docks, Quebec dock and Canada dock, with the majority of the old Canada dock being filled in. The site that we see today has been redeveloped quite heavily, with the Surrey Key Shopping Centre now present, with other entertainment places such as a cinema, bingo hall, bowling alley and restaurant now present. The Regeneration Project is a joint initiative by Southwark Council and British Land and was completed in 2012 and includes new homes, commercial premises, a library and cultural spaces. The area is well connected too, with Canada Water Station being opened in 1999 with links to the London Overground and Jubilee Line. Although Canada Water isn't one of the most picturesque parts of London, I think it becomes much more appealing when you know the backstory and origins, and that it used to be one of the major docking areas in the country. That makes it a bit more special to think that back in the day there was significant trade going on in the area, quite the contrast to the shops that are now there. Having explored the history of one dock, it is time to discover another as I head to Greenland Dock. The area has the honour of being the oldest of London's riverside wet docks and used to be part of the Surrey commercial docks, most of which have now been filled in. Originally named Howland Great Wet Dock, after the family that owned the land, the dock was excavated in 1696. It was renamed Greenland Docks by the 18th century when it became base for the Arctic whaling, hence where the name Greenland comes from. During the 19th century, it handled trade in Scandinavian and Baltic timber and Canadian grain, cheese and bacon, and was enlarged in 1904. The majority of the trading, however, was timber, with the Surrey commercial docks controlling 80% of the capital's timber trade. Technological changes in the shipping industry would soon push the docks into a spiral of decline, and with timber being packaged as well as bulk carriers being far too large to accommodate the London docks, they were closed in 1970, with Greenland Dock being sold to Southwark Council. Between 1984 and 1990, the area saw vast change, with 1,250 homes being built. Although trading has ceased in the docks, the waters are still used today for boating and other water recreational uses. Leaving Greenland Dock, it is now time to move on to two of the most hidden gems and incredible wonders that London has to offer, as I first pay a visit to Russia Dock Woodland and then to Stave Hill. The Russia Dock was one of the former Surrey commercial docks, which also included the Island Dock and the Surrey Basin. The docks were used to import timber from Norway, Sweden and Russia, with it being mostly softwood known as dillwood, which was used for newsprint and manufacturing furniture. Following the closure of the docks in the early 1970s, the area was redeveloped by the London Docklands Development Corporation and in 1980 was turned into a 34.5 acre woodland. The woodland still contains some of the old features of the docks, such as the capstones, gauges, bollards, mooring chains and tracks, and now the area is maintained and owned by Southwark Council. It's hard to believe that Russia Dock Woodland is right in the heart of the capital and provides you with your little slice of splendour, which gets you away from the hustle and bustle of city life, but still keeps you close enough to give you a view of the financial district of Canary Wharf. From pathways and ponds to plants and picturesque treasures, you feel very removed from London as you walk through the magical fairy tale like woodlands. Also, I do love the dock history associated with the area, something you are always reminded of, when you walk along the old riverside and through the woodlands. 
If ever there was a way to end a walk, my final stop is a fitting finale and the perfect pièce de résistance. Right on the edge of Rushadock Woodland sits Stave Hill, which was added in 1985 by the London Docklands Development Corporation and is an artificial grass hill. At the bottom of Stave Hill, you are greeted with a quirky stairway and I have to say, I didn't just walk up it, I ran up it as I was so excited about the view I was about to experience. Once you get to the top, the view is awe-inspiring and you aren't short of iconic landmarks to see across the skyline. It really is a spot the landmark competition, with everything from the Shard and the Gherkin to Tower Bridge and the Cheese Grater on show. It truly is a breathtaking view to behold. As you pan across the 360 degree viewing tower, you get a bird's eye view of Russia Dock Woodland, which demonstrates just how big it really is. On the opposite side of the London skyline view, you get a unique perspective of looking at the skyscrapers of Canary Wharf, which are surrounded by trees right in front of them. Just the most amazing contrast. On the hill sits a cast bronze map of the former docks too, designed by Michael Rosello. When you are up on the hill, all you can hear is the sound of the birds tweeting in the neighbouring Rush Dock woodland, as well as the gentle breeze of the wind whispering past your ears. It really does give it an eerily and peaceful feeling about it. Well, what a truly special way to end the walk. I have to say the view from Stave Hill is up there with another one of my favourites, Hampstead Heath. What makes Rush Dock woodland and Stave Hill so different is that if I didn't stumble across them on this walk, I'd probably never know they were there. Now before I end this episode, I'm going to do a fun feature. And as my walk explored Canada water, I thought a good little piece of trivia would be to try and come up with as many places on the London Underground map which feature the name of a country within them. And I'll go through them in next week's episode. Of course, Canada from Canada Water is the first to get you going. If you have any, you can email me at londonvlogger at gmail.com or comment on this episode on YouTube, or send me a message on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, at London Vlogger. Or you can get in touch with me for a whole variety of reasons, whether you have a memory of London, or you want to share your favourite things to do in London, I'd love to hear from you. I hope you've enjoyed listening to my walk today, and don't forget you can follow all my walks on my website at www.londonvlogger.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Google Podcasts or SoundCloud. Until next time, stay safe and well, and I'll see you soon.